In this video, we're going to go over several examples which involve finding measures of center and measures of variation for probability distributions. And we will also look at this question, which asks us something about random variables in general. A random variable is defined as a process or a variable with a numerical outcome. So which of the following could be random variables? Well, it has to be numerical, right? So the three options here, there's two of them that are numerical and one that is categorical. So the amount of rain in inches would be quantitative or, or numerical, and the number of books purchased would be quantitative or numerical. But the one in the middle here says the major of a randomly drawn student. So that would be categorical. And so that can't be a random variable because it doesn't have a numerical uh, value. So the answer for the random variables out of these options, 1 and 3 are random variables, and 2 is not. And that's why that answer is here, 1 and 3. Number 35 asks us to find the mean. And the question the student had that submitted this question, they were getting the answer wrong, but feeling like they were following the steps correctly. And so I discovered that it's probably because there were no directions about how to round it. Well, the round off rule that is agreed upon in statistics uh, for measures of center and measures of variation, so measures of center like the mean, the median, uh, variation could be the standard deviation, the variance, and so on. So the round off rule for those type of measurements is one place more than either the random variable values or the data values if it is from collected, uh, collected sample data. So one place more than, an easy way to say this is to just say the x values, the original set of numbers, OK? So knowing that, the round off rule for this one will make our mean have one place after the decimal since our x values don't have any places after the decimal. Now the formula for the mean for a probability distribution, I'm going to write it out, the mean mu is the sum of the products of each individual random variable value times its corresponding probability. So we just need to make a working column where we multiply each of these sets of values and then add them together and that will be our mean and we will round it to one place. Now, before we get started on trying to find parameters for a probability distribution, we want to verify that it is truly a probability distribution, that all of the possibilities are covered, that all of these probabilities are between zero and one, as all probabilities should be, and also that when you add up all the probabilities, you do get one as a decimal or 100% if they are in the form of percentages. So making sure that this is a complete probability distribution, I found that there is a sum of one. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this formula to find the mean. So I'm going to do a working column here, x times the probability of x. So I'm going to multiply each x value times its corresponding probability. We can copy that down using the copy handle. And then the sum is going to be my mean. The sum of all these products. And so rounded to one decimal place, the answer will be 3.3. So for that question, I did add round off directions, uh, but that could be why you got it wrong if you didn't round it right. For number 37, it was a similar question, and I think it was to find the standard deviation. Well, 
once again, let's say we are asked to find the standard deviation for this problem. Okay, so let's find the standard deviation. Well, first of all, let's verify that it is a probability distribution, seeing that all of the probabilities are between 0 and 1, as they should be, and then adding them all together, I get 1. So, looks, so, looks good enough. So now I'm going to go ahead and calculate my standard deviation. Uh, to do that, the standard deviation has this formula. It's the square root of the sum of the x values minus the mean, so deviations from the mean, quantity squared, and times the probability of x corresponding to each x value. So I'm going to need the mean here in order to calculate the standard deviation. And also something interesting is that the the standard deviation is actually the square root of the variance. In other words, if you take away the square root sign and put a square on sigma, then this is actually your variance. Okay, and then your standard deviation can be summarized as sigma equals the square root of sigma squared, or the square root of the variance. So since you could get different types of questions where you're asked for either the mean or the standard deviation or the variance, for this problem I'm going to find all of them. I'm going to find the mean so that I can find the variance, and then I'm going to find the, uh, after I found the variance, I can take the square root to get my standard deviation. I'll also write the mean formula over here. Remember, it's mu equals the summation of the product x times p of x. All right, so let's get started here. We're going to do a working column, x times p of x. multiplying each x value times its corresponding probability okay so then the mean is the sum of those products all right now next we'll find the variance and then we'll find the standard deviation so for the variance, we're going to need another working column. We're going to need the deviations away from the mean, so x minus the mean quantity squared. And then we also want to multiply each of those squared deviations times the corresponding probability. You can do this in pieces. You can have more working columns if you would like to do first each deviation, then square each deviation, then multiply each deviation times its corresponding probability. Or you can just do it all in one shot like I normally do. Using parentheses, take my x value minus the mean. Now be careful here. We do know that the round off rule for measures of center is 2 point. For this, it would be 2.5 because that's one place more than my original x values. Yeah, that's the round off rule, unless there are any other directions given in the problem. So always follow the directions, um, but in, in the absence of directions for rounding, you could use the round off rule to one place more than the original values. Now, with that being said, if I was going to round this to 2.5, that might be correct depending on the directions of the problem, but I would not want to use 2.5. I would not want to use 2.5 here when I'm calculating my deviations because that is a rounded value. And once I take each difference, I'm going to square it, which inflates and increases exponentially, literally exponentially increases the round off error. So we never use rounded values in the middle of a calculation. We always use the full amount 
or you can put a whole bunch of extra decimal places in just to make minimize the round off error and sometimes that works out okay too. But with Excel, we have the convenience of referring to the cell that contains the entire exact value of the mean. So we're going to do that. We're going to just refer to the cell containing the mean and we're going to make it an absolute reference by putting in dollar signs in front of the column reference and in front of the row reference so that this does not get shifted when we copy the formula. We don't want a relative reference for that. We want an absolute one. Then each deviation gets raised to the power of 2. And then that gets multiplied times the probability of the corresponding x value. OK, so now we'll copy that down and take the sum of that working column and there you have your variance, okay? So now we are able to take the square root of the variance and arrive at our standard deviation. So if you did all those steps right and then you put in your answer and it was wrong, make sure that you weren't using a rounded mean when you were doing it, okay? Let's do one more, same situation. You could be asked for the mean or the variance or the standard deviation or possibly all three. So let's just go ahead and do all three. So what are the formulas again? The formulas are the mean is the sum of x times p of x, the variance is the sum of each x value minus the mean, so the deviation squared, and times the probability of getting that x value. And finally, the standard deviation is the square root of sigma squared. Okay, so we'll start with our working columns, x times p of x, multiply across, copy it down. Take the sum of that column and there you have your mean. Now we're going to go ahead and do the deviations squared and times the probability of x equals parentheses x minus the mean make it absolute, put those dollar signs in. You can also hit the F4 key on your keyboard and it'll do both for you. It'll insert those dollar signs automatically. And then we put the power of 2 times the probability of that x value. Copy it down. Add them up. And there's your variance. Now to get the standard deviation, Let's square root that variance, and there you have it. We're all set. Oh, and before I end, I did forget to double check that this is a probability distribution. So let's go ahead and just double check all the probabilities are between 0 and 1. And when I add them all together, I do indeed get 1. So I think we're good.